Hey guys, today we are going to talk about six cards that have gone up in price. And this is kind of a random assortment of cards. Cards have begun moving. I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, Amaket cards, standard cards will move. And until Pro Tour Amaket happens, they will keep moving up and down, up and down. But here are some other interesting cards, more casual cards and some modern pickups where if you know today, you might be able to save yourself tomorrow because it's not what you're expecting. Plus, if you have a local game store or if you can find somewhere online, you can get these cards really cheap. So let me start with the Champions of Kamigawa. And it is a older set. This snake legend has gone up to $9 from $1. Pre like during, it looks like, before Battle for Zendikar, it was trending at an all-time low, and at, since that time, it's gone up. Why has it gone up? It's gone up because there are, guess what, a lot of snakes. Now, the more snakes there are, the better the card becomes, and some of these snakes in Standard right now are very good. As a Lord effect, meaning it gives other snakes power, in this case, plus two, plus two, it will always be playable. It will always be good, just like the Minotaur cards. Eventually, there will be more Minotaurs. Eventually, there will be more snakes. Now, this is an interesting one where it was a very cheap. It looks like under 50 cents until recent, even under like 20 cents. Probably a 15 cent card. Now it's $2.55. What actually does it do? Unified Will, one in a blue, instant, uncommon. Counter target spell, if you control more creatures than the spell's controller. Obviously this card has gone up because I'm assuming a modern deck is trying it out. It may be Death Shadow, a Grixis version of Death Shadow. I've seen a few creative, but not altogether tier one uh, compilations of this card, uh, with this card being used in those decks. So interesting card, and if you have anything from Rise of the Adrazi, I would go ahead and find them because they are no longer the bulk cards they are. And that's one of the other things I wanna talk about. If you can buy older bulk, uh, Innistrad and older, and you can pay very good prices on them, you should definitely do it because these cards, you never know what's gonna spike, you never know, like in, for instance, the minus one, minus one counter, the Shadow Moor, that has a lot of uncommons and a very good common that has gone up to 4 to $5 in price. And if you have bulk in that, you will have tons of those commons and uncommons because at the previous time, they were not that expensive. So I do want to talk about the bulk very good older bulk is always worth sitting on unless it's too old like fallen empires are old i love this card i think it's time for it to go up in price and it has gone up in price now let's talk about another card orb of dreams it pretty much all permanents come into play tapped very very effective card however it has been cheap and now it is more expensive. It is $2.48 from probably 48 cents or looks like under a dollar until very recently. And you can see the trend really started around Battle for Zendikar. That's when we see these older cards from Champions and Betrayers go up in price. One of my opinions on cards is once a card gets old enough, it just will go up in price for no reason. And I point to mechanics, overuse mechanics, uh, such as the minus one, minus one counters. That was really creative in Shadowmore. And those cards got substantially better when they created Omniket, which is a set using minus one, minus one counters. Now, this happens to a lot of cards where a card is old and no one remembers it. And then suddenly a new set comes out and people are testing the older card with the newer cards and saying, huh, okay, there's more snakes. Let's play some snake commander or let's play some, you know, a, let's make an ED8 snake deck. And then they have to buy the snake commander. 
Now, Rise of the Adrazi, even with reprints, is still doing fine. I, it's just a matter of time with that set. So when we talk about old, what I consider old is Innistrad and Odor. Anything before Innistrad or anything after Innistrad like RTR. Shocklands are going up slightly in price, but you can still buy boxes for $80, $80, $90 all day. Sealed boxes of RTR, Gatecrass, those two, I just have a hard time imagining not being $80 a box. Like if it moves to 100 a box, it's going to start moving fast. But until that point, it's just going to be slow. So anytime that you have all is dust, you can see the lowest price was about five bucks and now it's at the all time high. Uh, the Grand Prix promo, I remember I sold it at the GP Houston for like 10 bucks or something, something ridiculous. Uh, and it wasn't a good deal, but I just want to get rid of it. So when you talk about old cards and rares, mythics, uncommons, they tend to go up in price after a few years. Now, the only exception would be RTR. And that's because I feel like they printed so much RTR and they just printed that set into oblivion and they sold a lot of it. And a ton of it was opened because people were really hungry to go back to Ravnica and why not? It's a great set. However, that has depressed the prices of the singles constantly. So that's why you don't see many RTR cards or you know, Gate Crass or Dragon Maze. Or, they were very powerful sets, but they never really spike up in price. Talking about old cards, let's talk about Starter 1999. And this is another card we're looking at. It is a common. If you have this set, you have a lot of this card because this set, I believe, was very small. And... This probably came in the introduction deck as well. Good card. It's the best modern version of it, meaning you can play this in modern. Uh, it is a modern playable card. It was reprinted in knife edition. It's always been a pricey card. It's something that people don't realize is good. The only reason it is good is because we don't have good taxing probe, we don't have ponder, and we don't have brainstorm. Probe and Ponder were banned, and Brainstorm is not in Modern. So the next best card is Light of Hand, and that makes it a Tier 1 card being played in some of the Tier 1 deck list. Uh, yes, you do have Visions as the best uh, blue cantrip, but this is good enough. I mean, it's okay. Um, it's not the best, but it's the best we currently have in the Modern. And should the control deck rise, this will be the best version. The starter, the artwork is very good. I have copies of this card. I really enjoy uh, the card. So, sleight of hand and any older card starter in 1999, just keep, just hold on to them. I own lots of copies of this card. I don't know how I came in to possession of so many copies of this card, but in previous videos, I bought a collection and like every deck he owned had four of these in Chronicles. I was like, oh, it's Chronicles, not Legends, who cares? Apparently it is now a $15 card. From the $4 it recently was, I just think it's very good in EDH. It's the ideal EDH card. Uh, all creatures, you know, creatures can attack and abilities you can tap for all creatures that come in. It's just very good. It gives all creatures haste. I don't know why I'm reading the text because I'm trying to figure out what it means. And I was like, wait a second. Doesn't it just give everyone haste? Yes, it gives everyone haste. It makes games a little bit better. People are not going to hard target you because if you play this in turn one because people are going to be like, oh, good. That's good for me. Uh, one of the better cards, I do like it. I have to find copies of it. I'm not exactly sure where all my copies went, but I do know I own a lot of copies of this from a collection I purchased previously. Good card. It's one of those things where EDH, you look at it, and it kind of, at some point in time, the Legends version was $54, and this version was only $5. There is a 10x, or I guess 11x difference. There will be price adjustment, because people don't care that much about black border versus white border 
And a good example I, of this I have is Blood Moon. The Blood Moon from Chronicles is much closer to the Blood Moon from, from The Dark, the original black bordered Blood Moon, than this card was. And that is how you can, there's probably a ton of cards like this where you have maybe a Chronicles version or a less pimp version and the difference is very drastic. It might be time to move in on those cards because at the end of the day, casual players are not going to care if they have the Legends Edition or if they have the White Bordered Chronicles Edition. Maybe they care, but they don't care 11 times as much, right? So this is honestly probably the real price of this card given the fact that the Legends Edition is $55, $54. This one makes sense at $14, $15. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know what else you want to see in this channel. Bye, guys.